were lighter. Call to order. Time is 6.06 .06 p.m. Wednesday, July 27th, 2022. Start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Use the flag in the front of the room here. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> uh, roll call. Clerk Commissioner Hodgkins. Here. Vice Mayor DeVille. Here. Mayor Jacobs. We have quorum. Additions, deletions, or withdrawals to the agenda? Um, earlier today, um, I just wanted to bring to your attention, I did add to the agenda um, a couple of items, but there were more pictures um, than anything else. Um, I added them to the uh, bathroom renovations. I also went ahead and added them to um, having to do with the decorative uh, uh, traffic boxes and also we added an item 17.7 .7, which is the employment of our uh, uh, of our uh, police chief um, under Seventeen point eight. Yeah. Um, the, uh, retroactive pay for Joy Brown. Backup that I emailed you. You have a copy of that as well. Okay. No, no, no. All right. Presentations. 5.1, lobbyist update. Lobbyist Sigerson. <clears throat> Good evening, uh, Mayor, Commissioners. Um, I'm going to give a very brief uh, update. Um, legislative activity um, obviously it's after the legislative session there's not much that we are doing um, on the lobby side uh, but I do want to report about the uh, special session in May on <coughs> property insurance a property insurance reform bill uh, was passed and also a building safety uh, bill was passed if, if any of you want to have a lot more detail on that I'd be happy to provide that uh, let me know by email or give me a call and I'll, uh, if you have any questions about it. Um, one thing, I d one other thing I want to mention is uh, very importantly, um, the, uh, the governor, in his wisdom, vetoed the very bad Senate bill, Senate Bill, bill 620, which uh, was the bill that would authorize business damages um, to be to be sought by a business whose whose uh, operations or profits were hurt by an act of the commission, and allow them to sue and recover costs, and and attorneys' fees. That the governor vetoed that bill, and that was a big relief. Uh, I know the League of Cities worked very hard lobbying the governor as well as the um, the League of the um, Florida Association of Counties to to get the governor to, to veto that bill. And you know, other than that, in terms of activity, most of, most of the off-season activity for us so far has been involved in um, working, on, <coughs> working with the town staff on grants. Uh, either, um, well, we meet, we meet the, um, usually the first Monday of, of every month uh, with, the scene, with JC and the senior staff, um, usually Robert Clark and Miriam, uh, and sometimes others are brought in as, as appropriate. 
and we go over everything that the town's doing in terms of applying for grants and, and where we are with them so that we as, as the consultants can not only uh, help out and, and, and uh, um, realize places where we can help out, but also identify additional needs and um, so that we, we know what to look for in terms of, of uh, grant money. And so those meetings have been ongoing. I think the mayor even came to one um, of the meetings. Uh, and they've been very productive, I think. And, and I, I, don't, I, I don't know how Robert feels about it. Very uh, but we, um, we spend all the time we need to make sure that we know everything that's going on. And, um, and we, of course, you know, have the opportunity to make suggestions and so forth and so on. And, and you're going to see on your agenda tonight that a lot of things that we have been talking about in, in our most recent meetings uh, under old business. And the only other thing that I would say is um, the, and I forgot to, um, I, I meant to forward it on to Marlin, but uh, I just received word yesterday or the day before that the Broward County Legislative Delegation has set their um, local bill workshop <clears throat> and I'll send that notice. It's not something that you need to attend. I always attend, and the reason why is because I want to see who else is there and what they're up to. Enough said. <clears throat> if there are any questions, as always, I'm always available by phone, and you can email me. And um, any questions? Mayor? No. no. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Ports, committees, and city staff. Uh, 6.1, Broward Sheriff. Poker. Charles, thank you. Welcome. Good evening, uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, Commissioner Treville, Commissioner Hodgkins. Good evening. Lieutenant Joel Charles uh, with the Broward Sheriff's Office. Thank you for the opportunity to allow me to um, present uh, June 2022 stat <coughs> to the Commission. During um, the month, we had uh, 551 calls for service. We had uh, 61 accident investigations, and we issued uh, 41 citations. Uh, regarding arrests, we've had 17 arrests uh, for assorted uh, violations and uh, of uh, <coughs> statutes. We had uh, zero um, part one crimes in the uh, mobile home parks, and we had uh, nine incidents. Um, consisting of uh, burglary vehicles, uh, burglaries uh, consisting of catalytic converters, and uh, also a couple of uh, attempted burglaries. Um, if you look at your list, uh, two of those uh, burglaries, the first one, which is a residential burglary, uh, one suspect was arrested uh, at a later date, and uh, all the property was recovered. And um, the, the sixth one, which was a uh, burglary conveyance, um, uh, three suspects were uh, subsequently arrested uh, for that incident as well. And uh, with that, I'll be more than happy to answer any questions that you may have on the uh, subject. Um, number two, number 89, was that the one you said was taken care of? 89. No, sir, that was uh, case uh, 262. Do not have any questions. Do you have any questions? No, I'm all set. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Have a good evening. Fire Department, Chief King. Uh, good evening. Welcome. Thank you. Battalion Chief Michael Kane, Broward Sheriff's Office Fire Rescue. Um, good evening, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Vice Mayor, and Clerk Commissioner. Uh, I present to you tonight uh, the statistics for the Town of Pembroke Park for the month of June. In the month of June, we ran seven structure fires, 41 vehicle accidents, 16 fire alarms, 129 medical calls for service, and three service calls for a total of 196. 
which is consistent with previous months. And those are the statistics for the month of June. I'd be happy to answer any questions if you have any. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, within 5% or so. Yeah. Okay. Questions? No, thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank evening. you for your thank time. Thank you, sir. Uh, I got I to look into this real quick. Regarding uh, uh, the five, um, back at six. We're live. It's six thirty. We'll continue. This is the third amendment to the settlement agreement between Broward County and the settling municipality. This can be for discussion and something to be done by the city council to help us get through this. We'll discuss it when it comes up, but I wanted to make sure that it was on here for this. Um, going back seven, building department, building official Nunez. <coughs> Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Commissioner. Uh, Miguel Nunez, building official, Pano Pembroke Park. Uh, this time I'm going to be presenting the monthly status report for June 2022. Um, <coughs> by the numbers, first of all, like I always said, the building department is still ex uh, excelling and to the internal and external customer service. That's a standard and like I always said, we in the building department, we are considered the best in Broward County. However, by the numbers, <clears throat> uh, we have, it has gone up and down but not significantly on the uh, permits issue. It went from uh, 132 to 143 commercial from 48 to 104, so that means we have an, an increase in commercial, a little bit increase in residential from 84 to 39. We closed almost the same amount of permits during the entire month, which is 58 from the previous month, 57 this month, <coughs> um, June, I'm sorry. And inspections, it remains very, almost the same from previous months was 376 and 331 for this month. On the, those 331, <coughs> It was divided in a structural with 189 inspections, 28 electrical, 46 plumbing, and 68 for a total of 331. Uh, from counter visits, we have an increase on this month from 110 to 127. Uh, double permit fees, we have almost double. It went from uh, a little bit less than double. Uh, we went from 28 double permit fees uh, from previous month to 40 on June. And the amnesty program, we have an, an additional uh, applicant for the amnesty program for a total of 34 so far. And we are in the process of processing three reimbursements, uh, which I'm in conversation, I will be having conversation with the new finance director as of how we're going to be proces processing those reimbursements. Uh, in regards to the f uh, funds, the building department collected $70,781 for the month of June. And that puts us only to 257000 to a breaking even uh, for, for the budget compared to, uh, to our uh, revenue. And obviously that's in conversations with the finance director so that way we can uh, coordinate all these numbers. In regards to the large construction projects, uh, basically we are still uh, re uh, reorganizing building two and three on Seneca. We finally issue just to let you know, this was not in June, but as of today, we issued a temporary fence uh, in preparation for the uh, issuance of the clear and growing, and it also in preparation for the beginning of the two buildings. There are close to 400,000 square feet in both buildings. Uh, we're still waiting for building five through the resubmittals, and we're still waiting uh, <clears throat> on the Seneca Town Center, the Wawa is on the uh, second review cycle, and we're just waiting for the comments uh, being returned back to us. Uh, Magnolia Town Homes right here in, in 52nd. We're still waiting for the finalization of Broward County and the DRC. Same thing on Pembroke Oaks, which is a seven buildings, 120 residential units, and 5,000 square foot commercial as of right now. 
that is right here in 52nd and uh, West Holland Beach Boulevard. In regards to Pembroke Villas, that is right in, in County Line and between 52nd and 48th. We have 28 townhomes coming in there. Uh, right now it's a pre-application meeting and they're gonna be uh, moving to the development, to the DRC, Development Review Committee. Uh, Pembroke Plaza, we still have no other additional tenants. We're still waiting for that. Uh, O'Reilly is uh, waiting for the last set of comments. They said that they will have, a, they are selecting the contractors at this point in time. So as soon as they have contractors, the last comments will be submitted to us for issuance of the permit. And obviously, unfortunately, the car wash at Seneca, we're still waiting for Broward County and their association to make a determination as to what's going to happen with that particular project. Right now, the clear and growing is complete, but we cannot issue the, the site permit without Broward County, and that's the only holdup that we have. Everything is being approved except for Broward County. Um, in addition of the above reported items, the building department has processed numerous additions, mobile home alterations, and um, small uh, 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 alone, uh, permit alone buildings permits. Uh, as always, if you have additional questions, please, I'm here to answer them. Questions? No, I lost that. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Let's do additional noise ordinance, chapter <coughs> 17, 7.2. Yes, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Commissioner Miguel Nunez, building official. Uh, this is uh, a small change to Chapter 17 of our Code of Ordinances. This will be we will, uh, will be presented to the next commission meeting for first reading. And this allows for a waiver during the construction process. As you know, Chapter 17 does not allow for any waiver system whatsoever uh, as of certain hours of operations and of certain hours of noise from 7 to 6, 7, 7 to 7. Basically, that's what I call it, sundown. Uh, sun up to sun down. However, they don't give us any kind of leeway as of what happened in during the construction, especially waiting uh, in preparation to the wave of projects that we're going to have that do the supply issues and the concrete procedures, and sometimes they need to start earlier. We couldn't uh, allow any for any waivers. Therefore, we are adding language into our Chapter 17 to allow the building official in writing under certain conditions approve, uh, approving to start at certain hours in, in, in terms of three days, on, on bursts of three days. That means it's not a blanket permit for them to do whatever they want. It's just under certain times, certain hours, certain days. So that way uh, they can proceed with the project and that's going to be issued in writing. That would be part of the permit process? That, that will be would during be the construction the, process. And the instructions in the permit or something. That is correct. Normally that happens after the permit is issued, that they start construction. Let's say, for example, they, they cannot start concrete. They have 400 yards of concrete to pour. Uh, you cannot start at 7 o'clock. Now we're talking about uh, traffic issues, peak hours, delivery issues, and so on like that. As you know, we are in hot weather concrete, so that means they need to pull from batch to batch. Batch is from the moment of the concrete gets out of the plant to the moment that is deposited on the field is 90 minutes. So that normally takes more time. Therefore, they need to start earlier to beat all those uh, uh, constraints that they have. So that's why they always ask for the building official waivers in to start early. Let's say they're going to start at 5 o'clock in the morning, 4 o'clock in the morning. Then during the conditions, and depending on the issues that it is, the building official has the ability to do it. And that's the reason why we, we are proposing <coughs> the waiving on the, in certain, air, certain times uh, for that particular issues. That particular site doesn't have uh, too much of a residential impact, correct? Um, that is basically, this is a city-wide, town-wide. It's not only one specific area. You may not have too, many, too much constraint, for example, in Seneca you might have constraints or, or complaints because of the uh, residents of West Park. Obviously, we, uh, one of the requirements is that the contractor or the applicant notify the town of West Park, assuming that that's the area, uh, and that will be one of the requirements. For example, we have 52 town homes coming in, in 52nd. We have 26 town homes coming in county line. We have seven buildings coming right here. So they are in residential areas that they need to pour concrete, and a large number of concrete. 
assuming I'm, I'm talking about concrete as a one item, not necessarily has to do that. Could be the material delivery uh, at one specific time. Now they have backup beepers and certain things. So that's what I'm talking about. That kind of gives a blanket to any hour of the day or night, right? No, sir. Doesn't give any blanket to any you know, uh, any hour because they need to request it to the building official in writing. It's up to the discretion of the, the discretion of the building official to grant it or not. That would be you. Uh, <laughs> okay. Yes, sir. All right. Yeah, I was just making sure that doesn't that we don't get a lot of overlapping complaints and uh, you know say, oh, they're starting at three o'clock in the morning. I don't, you know, I work from seven to three. I'm just getting to sleep and I can't sleep because they're making all this noise. And whatever. Unfortunately, so, that's part of the construction process. Yes, it is. I know. I worked it for fifty years. So. All right. Thank you. That's all I have. You're welcome. Anything? Is it always morning? Starting early, or can they stay later? No, necessarily. Sometimes it could be at night. So it depends on the supply, depends on the deliberations. Right now, for example, you have contractors complaining that they cannot even ask, uh, receive concrete at all, and they need to put concrete for two months ahead of the time. So by just to give you that example, if they are coming to the to the deadline and they need to finish certain work or, or require certain delivery time, uh, when you're talking about 400 yards of concrete, you're talking about close to 40, 40 trucks. So now we're talking about substantial amount of money. Sometimes the plant has to be open for more more time because of that reason. Again, that's not a blanket permit. That's in a case by case basis, and this they need to demonstrate the the need. Has this been purviewed by the town attorney? Does it need to be looked at by the town attorney? The town attorney has provided the ordinance already. We already have discussed it, but they don't. The, the town attorney doesn't need to look at it after it was already passed by ordinance. All right. Thank you. Any more questions? No. All right. Move on to um, 7.3, unsafe structures. <coughs> Staff. This, this item will be line item. Okay. It'll be an ordinance. It'll be an ordinance, right? Yeah. Okay. So this next one's line item. Go ahead, Miguel. Thank you. Um, Miguel. What's that? Yeah, uh, it goes on the yeah, line item. Oh, okay. That's first reading. Okay, okay uh, Miguel Nunez, building official, mayor, vice mayor, commi uh, commissioner. Uh, this is a very, an addition to our code of ordinances, and this is going into our chapter <coughs> five, basically, if you want to call it that way. However, the town of Pembroke Park uh, historically has been, ish, uh, has been using the Broward County on Safe Structures Board. Uh, we have experience every time the building official or uh, well, the, the only one that can declare a building is, is the building official on safe. Uh, has declared a building on safe when it goes to Broward County, some for the most part is delay, delay, or they don't have a quorum, or they don't have uh, an ability to satisfy the conditions of, of the building official requirements. Meanwhile, we have an unsafe structure declared here that we cannot take it to the to, uh, to the uh, to the hearing or to the process because, uh, in, uh, as outlined in Chapter 116, we copy you have, we should have the copy there. Uh, that's the reason why I, as a building official, I'm requesting via the building department the formation of our own unsafe structures board. Now, I do understand it's not going to be an easy task. I'm not saying that we abandon Broward County. We're going to continue Broward County as a, once we form our own and we have our own as a secondary source, should we do not have a quorum or for whatever reason all until the time that we form our, our own board. However, <clears throat> that will allow us to maintain the control of their own safe structures uh, in our town, no by a third party or anything like that. Somebody who's on the neighborhood or somebody who knows the conditions of the town. Obviously, the the own safe structures board can deny or upheld the decision of the building official. It's not that they are a, a rubber stamp, and I want to make it clear like that: they are not rubber stamp. 
They are of specific guidelines based on the Florida Bar uh, Building Code, Broward County Administrative Provisions, uh, Sections 116. And they need to follow those, uh, the building official needs to follow those criteria, the cost guidelines, and the timing and everything. And the board, uh, the Unsafe Sources Board can create their own guidelines. However, there is specific uh, for uh, individuals that can form that particular board. We're talking about nine individuals. Five requires a quorum. They have a specific licensing requirement or professional licensing requirements. We're talking, if you look at into you, in, in your attachment, you're gonna find that they are, uh, <clears throat> let me see, if you, if you see on the, on, on the ordinance section, you're gonna see that it's a, one is a registered engineer, a registered architect, a general contractor, an electrical contractor, an attorney at law, a plumbing contractor, a real estate appraiser, a real estate property manager, and a citizen with experience and background in the field of social problems. Now you're talking about nine individuals. Those nine <coughs> individuals are appointed by the, the governing body. That means you guys. They have a specific timing, and as you know, is, it is in the ordinance here. I don't want to bother you about the timing we serve in, in offset two years, three years, and then go back into three years arrears. And now, one of the questions that I've received often is, what if we do not have an individual that resides in the town? By voting of the commission, we can bring somebody from the outside that the commission may know or may want to bring it. Now, be aware, when you're talking about, I'm just giving an example. A general contractor needs to be a licensed general contractor. It cannot be somebody that was a general contractor. It's nobody that was a general contractor in New York. It needs to be Florida active general contractor right now. And just an, an example, what it is. That's how professional this board is. So you can bring, by a decision of the board, or the, or the commission, you can bring anybody from the outside and name it into the board. Other municipality has done that, just to let you know. So it is entirely up to you, whoever the commission <coughs> decides, who you're gonna bring, who you have on, on the on the on this board, and we will be vetting via the the, the 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 town clerk office. These individuals, should you authorize this, I will be providing the form to the clerk's office as of how they're gonna fill it up and what the conditions are. Obviously, that's gonna be presented to the commission for your information only, because basically we're collecting information for those individuals as a matter, it will be a matter of public records also. In addition to that, uh, those individuals, once they are appointed by the, by the commission, they will form at the board and I will be preparing a workshop to explain to them each and every step of the way. Who pays for the demo? Well, that depends. If the board order is to demo, the town or the building department pays for the demo and that goes as a high priority lien on the property. If they get foreclosure, if they don't pay and the owner has to provide the, the funds. If they don't pay, then it goes to foreclosure and we collect the property or we collect the, the sale, the proceedings of the sale. That's exactly, and chapter 116 is very, very clear on that and that's a high priority lien. Usually the property will sell and then the town is the first lien on the property and recoups their cost through through the first lien. Am I correct, Sangoso? Yes. Thank you. Yeah, that is correct. Thank you. You're welcome. I was going to say, you're going to have a hard time finding all of these here in town. <laughs> I'm not afraid of work. I know you're not. I'm just trying to make it better uh, because I don't want it to have uh, properties like A and B recycling declared unsafe for four months, and now is when it's going to the Unsafe Structures Board. And after that, it's going to have 90 more days. And we still have the same issue over there. Sorry for that, but that's. I completely understand. No good. Do you have any questions? None for me. Thanks. Any way to light a fire under Broward to make them move faster on these things? Uh, Broward County is not going to pay attention to any of us if they don't have a quorum, sir. Thank you. Um, you want to move it to consent? Yeah, we'll move that to consent. Uh, this is not Wait, consent, this is, this is a, our ordinance. Mind, this is a line item. But the 
face down as another line item. These are volunteers? These are volunteers. They don't have compensation unless they need to have to travel for whatever reason. And that time, the, the, the town will reimburse them. Yes. And obviously, that will be part of the, of the process. OK. Right. I'm, I'm sorry for the mention now to expand on that, sir, uh, Commissioner Hoskins. Yes. Uh, I will be presenting, even though in our fee schedules right now, we have fees for the, uh, for the next fiscal year. For the unsafe structures, we already have the fees established for unsafe structures boards and, and, and the charges associated with that. We're just going to be updating it to make sure that it reflects exactly all the items that we have. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Any you questions? for your time. Thank you. Eight, code enforcement. Chief Code Enforcement Officer Ramirez. 8.1, code enforcement monthly report, June 2022. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Clerk Commissioner. Chief Code Enforcement Officer Jocelyn Ramirez reporting for the month of June 2022. Let's see, make this works for me. Battery, we're sending back to training for it. Uh, I have to go to training for everything right now. <laughs> Jocelyn, we have it here on our iPads. We can follow along. Can you do it manually? You said it worked for the other side? Huh? Did it work for this side? No. Okay. No, it's not working. Operator air. No. <laughs> then I'm going with the operator air. What? Operator air. Operator air. <laughs> air. <laughs> All right. Go ahead, okay. Jocelyn. We have it here. Sorry. We'll All right. Follow along. So for the month of June, uh, we had 12 liens, 16 notice of violation, 12 formal hearings, six final orders, five amended final orders three non-affidavit of compliance, 17 affidavit of compliance, and four order, uh, four uh, fines that we abated. So we, uh, we recently had a July hearing, July 20. Um, it was successful. We had 19 formal hearings, nine hearing to confirm fines, 11 uh, fines abated, and three um, extension requests that are granted. Um, for the 19 formal hearings, we had two cases that complied, so we removed those from the agenda. And then our next hearing will be on August 17, 2022. And since we're on the topics of hearings, I wanted to inform you that Special Magistrate um, Rafael Suarez Rivas, um, after the August hearing, he uh, can no longer um, work for the town because he has a full-time job that will con will be a conflict of interest um, working for the town. So we are we only have one special magistrate and that's Harry Hippler so in the event that he can't make it you know it will cause us to have cons cancellations in the future. Update. So um, I always keep you updated of um, the property 1708 Southwest 31st Avenue where we have that problem area. Um, a and B recycling is using towns right away for business use. This is an update um, from June 21st um, and then the following day um, it was cleaned 
Public Works uh, Director Robert Clark um, set this cleanup up um, based on an open case um, that code enforcement has, and the cleanup costs will be reflect on the lien. Um, as you can see, everything was cleared in town's role. However, it's back there again. They're starting to use uh, towns right away. Uh, almost seems like they're retaliating, putting more trash there. Um, so I will be working on, um, there, there's an ordinance that we have that says that we can confiscate their business license, their BTR. But um, I have to do research if it coincides with state statute. In addition, um, building official Miguel Nunez is sending uh, the owner to the unsafe structure board on August 17th. However, as he mentioned, it can be canceled at any time. Um, it has been canceled three times. Hopefully, third time's a charm and they finally hear the case. And we are also in communication with the attorney, um, Brian Sherman, about the foreclosure. He did mention that it, it could <coughs> take several months to um, file for this foreclosure process. And also, um, you know, the fees are can be up to a thousand, thousands of dollars for filing for a foreclosure. So there's a lot going on, but right now it's on legal's hands you know, to go forward with this foreclosure. Um, another update is that I'm still reviewing vendors for the E-Certify. So far, I have found two vendors. Um, I think it's staples.com and certifiedmaillabels.com, uh, which um, they don't charge us extra for using their service. We just have to use postage. So it will save us about 35 cents per mail piece. Um, but still having set up an account with um, a vendor, still looking into it. Um, some things that we're working in code is uh, reviewing the Chapter 7 and citation process. So there might be some changes that we'll bring forth next meeting. Um, we're also reviewing the waste management fr franchise agreement um, because we do have to enforce um, businesses uh, and residential to solely use waste management. Um, another item that we're working on is uh, assessments of lake erosion at, at the mobile home parks. Um, our main focus right now is um, bamboo, Lakeshore Mobile Home Park, and, and Bamboo Paradise Mobile Home Park. That's all the updates. Getting back to waste management, is, uh, when we renegotiate with them, can we mention to them, uh, get involved in them and in doing the recycle stuff so we don't have to deal with recycle? Um, yeah, I believe so. But it, it has to be part of the agreement that the town approves. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Clerk Commissioner, uh, I, I can answer that. Um, the agreement that they currently have with the town in there, it does discuss if the town wants to uh, use them for recycling, so we can negotiate and, and include it in there. So that that's an option if the town so chooses to do to go that direction, we can reach out and negotiate with them. Okay. All right, thank you. But that would be in giving them the exclusive right for, for the, the recycling. recycling. That's correct. Well, it's recycling here it doesn't seem to really help us out too much. So cost us a lot of money actually. Um, and also, I don't think every business has is. I don't think it's mandatory for them to have a recycling container. No, actually, so. we we only uh, collect residential. I think it's only optional. Residential. We're only collecting residential. So if we do move that direction, then we can also, you know, include the businesses and encourage them to recycle as well. And it's not citywide either. So it's places that don't have it. Go ahead. 
I'm Robert Clark, Public Services Director. I have a meeting scheduled with them next week. Um, Barbara Herrera, who's our representative from the Waste Management, to discuss that specific thing. So what I can do is once I have that meeting, uh, I think that JC is inviting them on that meeting, then we can give you the particulars, then we can come back and put it in the next workshop. Sounds good. Yes, sir. Thank you. <coughs> Does it say MB recycling? They also have a graffiti problem. Um, for 17 Lakeshore Drive, we cited a mobile home that installed an AC without a permit. Um, 4400 West Honda Beach Boulevard. Uh, this business um, started changing um, the inside of the units and it's operating uh, without a business tax receipt or CU license. Um, we get multiple complaints about uh, Lake Trinity, Lakeside Estates Mobile Home Park, or RV Park, about um, continuous demos going on. So we are keeping on top of it. These are um, some of them that uh, are in the photos, but there are many, many, many that already have been removed. They are getting removed without permits. Um, the residents are not telling the property owner that they're just picking up and leaving. So the property owner is um, being held accountable for these violations and they are taking care of it. I don't wanna interrupt you, but just so you guys are aware, since we've been sitting here tonight, I've had two more complaints within the last hour about the same property. Not this particular unit, but the entire mobile home park itself. Yes. So they continue to roll in. <clears throat> constantly if it's not my cell phone not my town phone or my e email or even people stopping by my house it doesn't stop so people are very upset in this park at the moment um, these are compliance before and after photos this is a uh, 5434 West Honda Beach Boulevard overgrown vegetation damaged fence this is right next door to town hall as you can see, the fence were filled with vines, overgrown vegetation, that pole, um, light pole, it's deteriorated, falling. <laughs> um, and this is on the boulevard, West Honda Beach Boulevard, that's how it looked. These are the after photos, the owner did pull a permit to put in a new fence, removed the overgrown vegetation. So overall, the boulevard and the back end of the property is looking much better. And they've removed the deteriorated light bulb. This property is 4100 West Holland Hill Beach Boulevard. Um, they, were, they have an open violation uh, regarding light conditions. Um, so one of the items that they need to correct was the parking lot. However, they started the work without permit, um, so there was another violation. This is the result. They obtained their permit. They painted the building. The property is looking much better. This is the plaza at 4520 West Holland Hill Beach Boulevard. The monument sign had a, a lot of um, unpermitted signs, and the monument sign needed maintenance. This is what it looks like now. They have obtained the permit for all the uh, businesses that are current. This is the same plaza. Uh, they also had to maintenance the parking lot. This is what it looks nice. Looks now very nice. And they pressure wash the common areas as well. This is the gas station on 5551 West Honda Beach Boulevard. Um, they had a damaged fence, uh, parking lots, and common area needed maintenance. This is after the fact. They obtained permits to put a two new chain link fence. This is the property at 2617 South Park Road. Uh, exterior maintenance is required. This is after they painted the building, and they still have to um, pave and restripe their parking lot. 
This property is, is at 3101 Southwest 25th Street, right next to Pat, Patrick Behan Park. Um, they needed maintenance in their parking lot. This is after when they paved and restriped with a permit. And that's all. That's all the updates for June. Any questions for me? Have any questions? No. no. Keep up the good work. I want to say uh, thank you. The complaints have come down a bit. So um, no one is upset with you and Eric as much as they used to be. So <laughs> I think that's a good thing. That's good news. But um, yeah. we're making a lot of progress in town on bringing it back up to, uh, to at least a standard situation. So thank you for your time Thanks. and Eric as well. And Lisa, she's not here. And Lisa as well. All right. Number nine, finance department. Come on up anyway. I'll put you in the hot seat. I'd like to take a moment to introduce everyone. This is Roy Brown, our new finance director. Um, he is neck deep in work at the moment and uh, trying to keep his head above water. Sure. But um, welcome, Roy. Got a little update for us? Yes. Uh, Good evening, uh, Mayor, Clerk Commissioner, and Vice Mayor. First off, thank you for the opportunity. Um, <clears throat> this week I had the chance of meeting with a few departments. Uh, law enforcement, police, um, met with a building today for a few hours. Um, so next week I have a few meetings scheduled with legal and other departments. I'm just getting the budget together, building some assumptions, and really looking forward to working with the other departments. Hopefully within the next uh, two weeks, you know, we'll have some more concrete numbers about what our gap is or what our surplus is. Um, but I'm really uh, having the help of everyone here, the staff, and so far so good. So any questions, I'm here. That's a good thing, right? <laughs> Enjoying it so far? Yes, so <coughs> far, so far so good. Great, great staff helped me along the way. So I'm thankful for that. All right, thank you. Oh. Thanks, welcome. 10, Police Department, Interim Police Chief Howard, 10.1, body cameras. Mayor, Vice Mayor, Clerk Commissioner, I, I really uh, I feel bad bringing this forward at this point, but uh, Motorola contacted me and stated there's a four to six months delay in getting this equipment, so I, I need to get it approved um, now and then um, so we can get the, at least get it on order. Uh, Motorola won't get payment until it's received and working. And um, you want to not to exceed 140. I know it's 139. Right. All right, let's put this as a, uh, do you have any questions? No. Questions? Questions. How many uh, cameras? 30. Can you put this on as a um, consent item, not to exceed 140? 140,000. And I'd just like to make note, we did reach out to our Congresswoman, Federica Wilson, um, for assistance in our body cameras, uh, for 30 cameras at a cost of 138, 139,000. She said no, but she did give the town of Hollywood 300 cameras. Mm -hmm. So I'm still working on that relationship and trying to get help out here, but um, I can't do it all alone. So. Um, keep at it and we'll see if anything can ever come about but it's been uh, nine years since she's been in office and we still haven't seen anything so I will just keep strong and keep at it so we'll see what happens I did get her at least here one time for the swearing in of our officers so that's a start so um, how about 11 planning consultant come on up How y'all doing, Mayor, Commissioner, Vice Mayor, Town Clerk? I'm uh, Kai Schwartz, the Town Planner. Um, and any questions for me? Just give us update what you've been up to. Okay, so uh, this week, you know, doing uh, processing a lot of uh, BTR requests, uh, zoning uh, inspections. Uh, this week, something there was a uh, property owner who was seeking to uh, 
put in industrial M1 uh, storage and distribution of firearms, ammunition, and sporting goods. Um, and it was the language in the code and the ordinances were very vague because in M1, the only thing that's listed under that type of criteria is a prohibition on the storage of explosives. And I had to ask, I had a conversation with fire and the building official on what whether ammunition constitutes as explosives under this uh, criteria. And they said yes, so I decided to issue for that BTR request a partial pass that allows them to store and distribute the firearms and the sporting goods, but that they would require a variance in order to uh, sell the ammunition. I also, we also recently got an update from the new uh, indoor soccer and paddle uh, facility that's being planned on, uh, I think it's Hallandale. Uh, they gave us a uh, parking, they're asking for a parking reduction uh, because in terms of square footage, what they would need is like over like 120 spaces based on the size. They're asking for a parking reduction down to 23, uh, which is what they said that they would need for peak hours. But on their site plan, they only list 11 spaces um, in the site plan. And also they claim there's going to be some sort of a, a shuttle facility that picks up and drops off children, but there is nowhere on the site plan that lists where that would be. So we're following up with them and trying to see figure out these inconsistencies. Uh, and you know, I received the draft for the economic development report, read through it, took some notes, you know, we can discuss that whenever. Uh, this week I had a meeting with uh, Mayor Jacobs uh, regarding uh, just his ideas for planning and development. And I'm trying to schedule meetings with uh, each of you know the commissioners separately just to pick their brains about uh, planning and development. I'm supposed to meet with Commissioner Hodgkins next week and Vice Mayor DeVille, I haven't gotten a confirmation with you, but I would love to sit down and talk. Thank you for your time. Do you have any questions? No, I don't. Thank you. No, welcome. All right, thank you. Thank you. <coughs> well, human resources. JC, I'm going to put you on the spot for a minute here. <clears throat> sure. Uh, have we, um, we talked about uh, bringing in some temps to fill our all our positions out in the parks. Did that ever come about? Did you look into it? Uh, you know, um, I, I'm just waiting for the HR director to come in, and, and that's on August 15th, and then hand her everything to, to get everything done. And I'm sure they're doing everything by uh, labor standards. and I, I But August 15th, our new HR director starts. So. Okay. Right? Can I interject something for a minute? The, uh, at the last meeting, I had people complain to me they couldn't hear us because we're talking back here from the mics instead of into the mics. And so they couldn't hear half of what they said. Oh, you guys are up there mumbling. We don't know what the hell you're saying. <laughs> so I guess we need to speak up. <laughs> yeah, my apologies. I'll move this microphone even closer. <laughs> All right. Um, we'll go 13 IT department, IT director Pakula. We have nothing. JC, do you have anything for him? Uh, no, he's in a conference this week. Okay. All right, public services department, public services director Clark, 14.1 public service dire um, services department, July 2022 report. Uh, good evening. Robert Clark, Public Services Director. Um, thank you for the opportunity, Mayor Jacobs, Vice Mayor DeVille, and Clerk Commissioner Hodgkins for the essence of time because I have so much to cover. If you have any questions concerning the uh, the monthly report, uh, I would uh, love to answer. You guys had a chance to review it? Yes. All right, you have any questions? No. I don't have any. I think I talked to you earlier and we covered pretty much everything I needed to cover. So 14-2, contracts for school crossing guards and services. All right, before we go into that, I just want to bring it to the point for um, um, the town manager. We did discuss about the issues concerning the, the attempts, and uh, and he brought to my attention about that. But we have a plan in place. We have all man, all hands on deck every 10 days to go over there and mow the grass and, and do whatever is necessary to bring the park up to speed. 
um, you know, we're, we're one team even though we're spread over across three divisions, but we're all one team and we all pitch in wherever is necessary. So if I got a pipe broken, I have guys that will come in that are off of roads and streets to help out. <clears throat> as well as go into the parks and mow the grass whenever we need to. We're spread, that, we're spread thin, but we'll get it done. That was more so for the fact that you're missing three, four people right now? Uh, yeah, COVID has hit me pretty hard, or, or sickness. I ain't going to say COVID. I'm not being nonspecific. Sickness has hit me pretty hard uh, for one reason or another. And then plus it's the summer. People want to take time off for their families, and, and I'm not denying anybody's opportunity to spend time with their family. So along with leave, sick, and just being down because we're only down um, two people in in the park. Um, now, overall, in your department, how overall. many people? Overall, in the department, we're missing three, four. I think it's four. I think it's four. Yeah, four. So you're four. down four. Yeah. Okay. But um, yeah, but we we got it covered. Okay. No question about it. And and, and I appreciate the, the the emails and text message. And all of those things to to bring attention because you know sometimes you know, things get overlooked. But I myself was out there dragging branches, you know, to get them off of the park lawn just to do whatever is necessary to get it done. So we're a pretty tight unit. We'll we'll, we'll do what we got to do to get it done, get the job done. All right. All right. So uh, let's talk about the the first thing on our on the agenda is um, about the um, the piggybacking of the crossing guard. So apparently we are responsible for two locations. I don't know if everybody has seen that. <clears throat> uh, can you scroll down to the bottom, all the way to the end? Pages. It should have been on the. Uh... Okay, there we go. Yep. That. So that's this. Uh, this page identifies the locations from which we're providing the services for the for the crossing guards, <clears throat> and apparently um, uh, we're paying for this. So we want to make sure that uh, it's okay for the commission for us to move forward with an ITB. We understand that we're we're piggybacking off of the uh, the contract that we have now. We can continue to piggyback off the contract, or we can go out. To bid for, so we're seeking direction either to go out to bid or to uh, to piggyback off of this contract. So I get a question because normally the police departments handle crossing crossing guards is Chief Howard. It, with the launch of the new department coming on, how is uh, crossing guards the plan on handling those? We can, depending, I haven't even looked at it yet, but depending on how many we have, et cetera, we can either uh, hire them or we can contract out whatever okay. the commission decides. We have two. I know I make the payment every month on it. So, um, so Rob, are we piggybacking off whose contract on this one? We can we continue to manage the contract, and I think it was on the beach, um, but it's, it's written up here exactly right. Was it the city of Miami, the contract? <coughs> Which one was it, Mayor? Uh, city of Miami. City of Miami. City of Miami. Yeah. And just so you know, the, the reason this, this came up, got a call from ESO regarding uh, an incident with a crossing guard. Turns out it wasn't our crossing guard. It was, um, I believe it was the one that worked for West Park's contract. Um, but that got us talking. I'm like, and I asked Rob, I go, Rob, what's the, the, the contract? Do we have a contract? I'm trying to get a hold of the company. If we find out that the contract was expired. Um, so I said, listen, we're going to need to get a new contract in place uh, and update it. And then obviously when the police department switches over, you know, we'll hand it over to them and then they can uh, further analyze <clears throat> whether or not to you know, hire their own crossing guards or, or continue with the contract. Okay. All right, so this contract expired a while back, so we're just trying to update this one 
until such time we have the police department op operational. That's yeah, yeah, what I'm absolutely. understanding. Okay. You know, and then, and then we we can the police can at first they're going to obviously be pretty much not I'm not going to say overwhelmed but busy in policing the town and getting things settled um, uh, and establishing a routine and then they can probably take on you know crossing guards and stuff like that but this will give them a little flexibility to not necessarily rush into it right away okay but uh, you know manage the contract all right yeah thank we, you we can continue to manage this contract until uh, everybody gets up to speed and then it can be uh, brought back to the Commission to have it transferred over Sounds good. Do you have any questions? <clears throat> Do we even need a contract? Can we just continue as is, um, month to month? For, for the amount of money, uh, right now we're month to month. So I, I don't see why we couldn't continue to, to do a month to month. I'd be able to do that. I, I just uh, yeah, I think it would be easier to break that and have the police take over if we don't even have a contract. Yeah. That That's fine. I, I just wanted to bring it to your attention that it's expired. It's been expired. And, and we've been paying all along. Yeah. It's expired, but it's working, right? Yeah, it's the system is working. So, yeah. can you um, do a small audit and find out what else we have that's still expired? Yes, <laughs> it's a it's a tall order, but yes, we'll we'll get that. I know. This uh this wouldn't be the first surprise that came forward. <clears throat> we have others. Go ahead. Um, so right now, the um, the next one is the uh, fitness trail and playground. Can we pull that one up? Excellent. Thank you. <clears throat> so, essentially, so essentially, I'm seeking direction from and uh, and or approval uh, from the commission to decide how we want to physically uh, identify either the fitness trail itself. And everybody's familiar with the preserve park. So how the, about how about we do this? We just hold off on all of it for right now. Okay. Because I'm working on a project right now for the for the all of this put together with the grants included and everything, and all inclusive. So. Um, okay, you saw splash pad there. Sir. I did. I did. So all of it. All of it. Got it. Yeah, all of it. I We're have gonna... it all into one package. Um, I've been talking to the manager about it. Also with a few other. Um, so once I finish this and get it together, you, I, and uh, the manager will sit down and go over it before we bring it back to the commission. <coughs> that way it's, <coughs> it's a complete package instead of piecemealing this together one at a time. So. Got it. Moving forward. <clears throat> Roof repair, item 14 four, sir. Got it. Um, essentially what it boils down to is we're gonna get the lowest bidder for the, uh, the preserved building so the water's running in uh, into the storage area where we have our lawn equipment, and we just need to get it fixed. So we went out and got quotes, and we're ready to move forward. This direction as to accept a quote and uh, and get the thing fixed. Is it a repair or a replacement? It's going to be a repair. Now we could, you know, get quotes for a replacement. Those shingles? Yes, they're shingles. Second here. You know how many squares that is? I don't, sir. But we do have a, a resident <coughs> uh, roofer you know, amongst us. Well, you need to know the square footage of the roof, so. So is this a, a shingle repair is 32? Yes. Yes. Okay. And which, which portion is being repaired? Just the part over the, uh, the shop side? No, it's, it's at the scene. Okay. Well, we identified that as a scene, but there's no telling with... Uh, as soon as we around. pry it up, it could be a, a can of worms over there. Wonderful termites and everything else. So... Do we have the funding for this? The thirty, the thirty-two hundred. 
Uh, yeah, we'll we'll find it. This is important. We have to. Not it'll it'll just be a worse problem later on. Okay. All right. Any questions? Uh, no I would question. I would think we could look into a different type of roofing for that building, maybe something that would uh, last longer than shingles. <coughs> the problem me. is that entire building needs either renovated or Tear pushed down. down. So we're in a spot where we either need to find grants, but the problem is we have too many grants outstanding to get any new grants until we close out some of these grants. That was the great news I got this week. So but looking at this picture, and I'm looking at this one, that, that it looks like. You have know, you been over to that building? Yes. Walked through how the whole thing. How, yeah. I I walked through the upstairs and around here, but I don't see how you can uh, actually fix, repair the roof. I don't see how you can do a repair. It looks like it needs to be replaced, and all and it looks like the stucco and everything on the building is falling apart, and so it means new flashing. It looks like it looks like it's a lot of work there, more than just a patch job. Well, the building itself needs a complete overhaul. Um, it's uh, it's come up multiple times over the last three and a half years. Ray and I have been here. Um, it's either a push it down and start over, but then we were told this was a historical building and you can't do that. But there's never been any proof or anything that showed it was a historic. This, trust me, this has gone up and down in every which way you can imagine over the nonsense on this building in the park. So. Um, it's one of those, if we go to do it, we're going to have to have a grant in order to fund it because the, the cost of it is going to be a lot. So um, it's one of those we're just going to have to wait on. So uh, another Band-Aid on top of this building to make it make it last a little longer is what we're going to have to do. Uh, Mayor, I just, you know that item 17.3 is vice mayor's item, and it's, it's, it's exactly this item. So Yeah. It is. So, 17.3, we'll get to that discussion again. Um, you guys all right with moving this to a consent item? Yeah. Yes, the repair, yes. All right, move the repair to consent. 14.5 <coughs> generator. Um, so here at, at 14.5, um, what we're talking about is with the addition of the, the new police department, we need to upgrade our generator to support the AC systems and the elevator. We've identified a 150 kV or kW uh, generator, but there are, there are a variety of different ways that we can go, and the, it needs to be uh, engineered and sized out. The quotes that you've received here are just for the equipment, not install, not all the other things that go along to placing the generator. What we did was is want to give you an idea of cost and the, the um, I've heard as long as an 18-month lead time on this equipment. <clears throat> and then most of the equipment is built to order. So based on that process, what I would, uh, I would recommend that we contact a mechanical and electrical engineering firm to put together a uh, scope and fee for a, a design and, uh, and manage project for this uh, in the essence of uh, um, making sure that it's done right. We're, we're not doing this thing in-house. We, we'll go out and have an arm's length relationship with the firm who can design it properly and put it in permanently. And uh, and I propose we go with the, uh, the natural gas. Don't we have an outstanding grant for this generator? So what we have, and, and the manager can talk more about it, is, is that um, we were looking at including that into town hall hardening in that project. And so what we, we've talked about a variety of different methodologies to, to spend that money, but it pretty much boils down to um, we've done the other two portions of it. We were trying to get the elevator in it, and, um, and that didn't particularly work. So uh, we may be able to circle back and include the <coughs> generator in this process. But specifically, I think we have an outstanding grant for the generator. Uh, it was never included in the no, hardening sir. project. Not in the hardening. There, isn't there another grant that was for the generator? I'm not aware of another grant. I'm generator. not aware of a, a, a single grant for a generator. Maybe my deputy knows something about that. <clears throat> uh, Mayor 
Vice Mayor and Commissioner. Yes, there is a portion of the hardening that is allocated for a generator. Um, but what happened is we tried to go the route for the FPL, um, and we presented that to the board. And it's, yeah. So the money that was allocated is not going to be sufficient. It's just going to be, we, we will need to, to supplement it with the town funding. Uh, the HMGP, yeah, the, on, under the town hardening. So it's under the town hardening yeah. that was listed for the generator specifically. But it won't cover the whole amount. Right. It won't cover everything. It won't cover the How whole much amount. is listed? Uh, we have 400000 for the, um, for the, um, what do you call it, um, switch gear and one fifty for the generator. Hundred and fifty thousand. So altogether five hundred and fifty thousand. And what are we looking at? No, 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 I'm sorry, no, that's way too much. Four hundred altogether for everything. Including okay, so hundred and fifty for the generator and two fifty for the switch gear? Mm -hmm. What were we looking at on the generator? We got higher quotes and we're gonna talk about that in a little bit with the FPL project down further. Okay. Yep. All right. And this is the reason. This is the reason why that that we actually need to go out and and have this thing sized properly because it's not just let's go buy a generator and park it outside and plug it in. We already have that. What we have to do is because of the infrastructure and everything associated with it, we're picking up more load. And because we're picking up more load, based on that, we need to size the generator properly, and we need to make sure that our, our switch gear is wired properly. And so that thing needs to be removed and replaced. And so that has to be included with it. And then this needs to be done by electrical engineers. Maybe size properly and scope. And it's, a, it's a long outstanding project. It's not something easy. <coughs> Great thing we have an electrical engineer on staff, isn't it? Sir. Um, all right, so what are you asking with this? What are you looking for? Well, in this particular can um, we brought <coughs> it up for discussion, but uh, if, if we can get some direction as to go to an engineering firm and get scoping fees for a uh, build and, and manage for the actual um, uh, design and manage, I'm sorry, for the actual generator, I think that's the appropriate methodology to go uh, other than our next subject that we're going to be talking about. Okay. And that's given, given the whole business to our next subject line. So on this, you're looking to send out $40,000 to an electrical engineering firm to figure... At a minimum, and that, and that, that cost and that cost itself may change. Okay. And we have an electrical engineer on staff at the same time. Well, she's not a PE. We need a PE sign seal. We need somebody with a great deal of design experience. Let's put this as a line item. Do you have any questions? No. Nope. All right. We'll make this a line item. Then 14.6, restroom renovations. Okay. The restroom renovations came up as a topic of discussion I brought to the manager as to where we're about to pick up um, anywhere from Ten to twenty new people in the building, and so therefore the the capacity in our in our basic design may not accommodate um, the capacity that we're seeking or we're moving towards, and so therefore the restrooms are are dated, and um, my plumber, who is our now our superintendent, he's brought to my attention that uh, some of the the water closets, the doors are coming off, and as well as the sinks, it's just not size properly and it's not modern enough and uh, we could probably use if you've been in the men's room you know exactly what I'm talking about so it's time for those to be brought up to code I think the, the first floor one is up to code but the second and third aren't so um, we need to take a solid look at all the restrooms in the town to include Beham well as the preserve um, that we have available to the public <clears throat> we need to look at um, strengthening or fortifying the restrooms that we do have 
uh, at the preserve building because for whatever reason they, they can't figure out what the partitions are for. They knock them down or pull them out of the wall. So we need to get that analyzed and, and, uh, and, and put it in to make sure that we have a, a quality um, restroom for our patrons <coughs> at, the, uh, at the town hall as well as to the park. I totally agree with the place being dated every which way and has not been updated in decades. So um, is this coming out of the town hardening? Does this fall under the town hardening? No, I, I haven't talked to JC about funding. Uh, I just wanted to get some direction from the town whether to go out and, um, and uh, solicit, find out what the actual um, 